So uh, I think I want to give uh, George the opportunity to give us a little bit of his background. And then uh, uh, we will move to the next. Uh, we are grateful for all those who have joined uh, so far and we are expecting more to join as the time goes on. So uh, the focus today is on business and uh, specifically design business. So I am hoping that you shall have a very good and informative discourse uh, for all of us um, in a way that we will live here more enlightened and uh, the knowledge sharing today, Itatuchokoza, Itatuchokoza to really seek to be better at what we are doing uh, moving forward. So um, uh, George Adulu, I have known him for quite a while and he's, uh, George Adulu is an outsider. He's an outsider in this space of ours because he's come from finance and uh, business uh, squarely background. But he has got his uh, at least one foot inside the creative space in terms of content creation, photography, video, and most recently brand strategy and, um, and uh, that whole issue of uh, branding and business branding. So George, give us a little bit more. Tell us more, more than what I've mentioned about yourself and where you are and start giving us your insights about uh, design business. Okay, thank you very much, Steve. Um, that's a very lovely introduction. Your mic is on mute. Thank you very much, Steve, for that elaborate introduction. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm, I'm struggling to, to, to decide where to start because I come here wearing very many hats. Um, my first entry into the creative space was as a photographer. Um, and while I was doing photography, I, I got concerned that I wasn't making enough money, you know. So I kept asking myself, what else do I do? So through research, I ended up uh, studying uh, video and then uh, again i started doing videography and offering videography as a service and then as uh, time uh, went by i also realized that the video business also was not doing very well for me so i was struggling as a creative and the question i was i kept asking myself was what is it that i'm not doing well what is it that i need to do so that as a creative i'm able to to, to survive and thrive because it's not enough just to make enough money to survive which um, I see a lot with the creatives it's important that uh, you're also able to thrive because then you're also able, by doing by by being able to thrive you're able to transform your life so the bigger problem that I kept asking myself or rather the bigger the bigger question that I kept um, asking myself was why am I doing this uh, photography and video and what impact uh, do I seek to create with the, the, the creative things that I was doing? I realized that the important question I needed to ask myself was that is uh, the photography and the videography that I'm doing helping uh, business people and uh, other individuals to solve their problems. So by doing that, I, I ended up studying digital marketing because uh, again I, the question was why do businesses need photography and, and video part of it was for marketing purposes so i went back and studied uh, digital marketing and then uh, did digital marketing for about uh, about a year um, which was also uh, building up on my on my photography and videography skills but again the question was why do companies and businesses need uh, digital marketing um the, the the answer to that was that they that they're trying to generate sales so the question for me was that if everything i'm doing as a photographer as a videographer as a digital marketer does not help businesses to to generate customers then it's it's it 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 um it won't be worth it for the businesses so to speak so it led me again to go and study a little more um because I realized that even as you do digital marketing and any form of marketing, the bigger issue is actually branding. Yeah, because as a, as a brand, all businesses try to build brands. Okay, 
because brands are what survive in the, in the long run. So I've evolved from photography to now um, as a brand developer and, uh, and as, a, as, a, as a strategic communication consultant. So that's my brief introduction um, in, in, and, and why I'm here. Okay, okay. Um, Asante Sana George, I think um, my first question to you will be, what are some of the myths, myths that you have had um, um, in this creative space, especially in terms of designing? And when I mention design, uh, design is broad. Uh, we are talking about uh, fashion, we're talking about graphics, we're talking about illustration, we're talking about product design. Um, we're talking about uh, new media, new media, we are dealing with things like um, gaming and interactive experiences. So that whole design creative space, uh, we have a lot of uh, needs. For example, uh, can Kenya and developing world maybe get into produce, producing? Like uh, COVID-19 has triggered the thought that Africa now needs to stop facing towards China and things like that. What are some of the myths that you have seen in the design space um, that you think we need to approach and we need to face head on so that uh, we continue building, we continue building our space and making it better for us as designers? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what you call the myths. Mike. Maya. Uh, so, sorry about that. I forgot to, to unmute it. Uh, I think from, from an outsider's perspective, I think the first thing that I, I notice with the creatives and uh, by extension, of course, designers is that we, as designers, there's, there's no direct link between your work as a designer um, or as a creative for that matter and how it supports uh, the business, okay? Because you find that uh, a lot of people will call themselves designers or creatives, but in terms of answering the question, how does my design help to, ele to elevate a business or a brand, you find that uh, for many people, they're not able to provide that, that specific link because your design, your design or your creative business is only as good as it solves business problems. Otherwise, you'll end up just designing things for yourself and people enjoy them, but they're not solving a problem. So I, I think that's the biggest problem I've seen, um, that we are not able to link our work and, and the business problems. The other thing is that uh, very few designers or creatives uh, go beyond thinking about themselves. Okay? So when you're designing things or you're creating things, you, you're thinking more about you, uh, you know, you want to make yourself happy about the design, you know, but forgetting that everything you do must be geared towards uh, your customer, okay? So, so the customer needs to be at the center of everything you do. You know, put yourself outside the picture and just focus on the, on, on, on the, on, on the business that you're trying to help. So those are the two things that, are, that I've seen occurring very many times, yeah. Uh, um, maybe one of the things that I can ask you is, um, maybe you need to mute your mic just a bit. Uh, George, um, perhaps what I want to ask you is, uh, we've got the problem, we've got the challenge of uh, paralysis of analysis as creatives. As designers, we get so embroiled in what we do. We get uh, so, we drown in our creativity, we drown in our work. We spend sleepless nights designing, conceptualizing, researching on how we will come up with this amazing idea. But then there's a business side, you know, where should our energies be? Because I'll tell you as a graphic designer, uh, perhaps uh, one who has tried to be really, really resilient, and it's a struggle. Uh, 11, 11 years later, since I started my business uh, in graphic design, for example, but I know 
many design agencies are not even owned by designers and they thrive. Then they will pick the graphic designer from uh, UON, uh, TUC and other institutions and employ them. They don't know anything about the software. Their creativity is nurtured on the business, yet can't, can't, can the designers themselves be business owners and they thrive? Are we cut, are we cut from that stones, that stone that uh, is meant for business? And uh, is it possible for us to run the business ourselves or do we really have to depend, for, depend on outsiders uh, to come in uh, while we are busy drowning uh, in our creativity and our artistry that we have very little space in our minds uh, to think about business. We're just busy about creating. What are your views about that? It's, thank you very much for that question. It's, um, it's a problem that I think I've gone through myself as well, uh, where you spend too much time uh, reading, researching, and sharpening your skills um, so that you can be the best that you want to be. But there's a distinction that we need to make as, as designers or as creatives. Number one, there's, there's, there's creativity on one part, and then there's the business of creativity, or there's a designer, there's design itself, and there's the business of design. Okay? Um, so how to, how to approach the two issues is that if you are in the business, if, if you're a designer, then design becomes an end um, in terms of it's the end is the end service that you're offering okay um, but if you are in the business of design then design becomes a tool that you use to do many other things okay um, let me give you an example um, as, as a photographer if I want to if I, if I want to be uh, known as a photographer then the pictures that I take are the end in, um, that are the end product that you know, I'll come to a business and uh, they want photos, I take the photos and that's it, okay? So that is, that is me being a photographer. So in, 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 um, in, as a designer, if, that's, if, if you're thinking design only, then your, the output of your design work is the end in itself. However, if you're thinking about the business of design, then the question is, what does, uh, the, your design skills, how, how do you package your design skills to help a business? Which means you go beyond your design and ask um, yourself, what else um, do you need to be doing as part of the design work, okay? Which means if you're thinking about uh, design as a business, then there's the first part where you design, then uh, maybe you need to do some printing, you need to do some uh, and advisory, you need to do design uh, consultancy, you know. Um, so essentially, you go beyond the uh, your your skill or your craft. Okay, um, whether a designer can do business or not, it's an issue of uh, personal preparation because you need to, to know that um, yes, you're a good designer, but if it does not translate into business, then of course it's a matter of time before you close you close shop. Okay. So you need to probably equip yourself, if you're a designer um, in that space, equip yourself with some business skills so that you're able to think beyond design and see how to monetize your skills, okay? Um, I'll give you another example. Um, the moment I started thinking beyond a photographer and beyond a video or videography, then those two skills stopped being the primary things that I sell to a customer, okay? Um, let me give you another example. If, as a designer, you approached a business and told them that um, I'm going to design for you um, the best poster or the best um, uh, magazine or whatever it is, and another designer approached the same business and told that business that I'm going to double your profits in the next one year, okay? Who who do you think the business is going to listen to? Is it the person who is saying they're going to design the best poster or the person who is saying, I'm going to double your business, you know, in the next one year, but using design, okay? 
So the second person is thinking about business. The other person is thinking about design. Okay. So as designers, you need to move from just thinking about being a designer and think about being in the business of design, which means the focus moves away from you and moves towards um, to, to, the, to the customers that, that you serve. Okay. So now that now your design skills become a tool that you use to solve bigger business problems. I don't know whether that uh, answers que uh, the, the question. The other thing that uh, probably now I need to add is um, the fact that sometimes that uh, analysis paralysis is, um, it, in fact, it tends to cripple us, okay? That you, you are in the trenches too many times, too many hours forgetting that um, you need to do business. You need to understand that um, you're already enough. You have the skills that you have, whatever you have, is already enough. It's enough for you to do business. Uh, don't don't be don't be bogged down by trying to be a perfectionist in terms of your skills. What what you already know is enough. I'm sure there's a business that um, you know will pay you for you for for for, you, for for your knowledge and for your skills. You can always improve with the time. Keep improving on a daily basis, but don't stop doing business. Uh, and, and get paralyzed by just uh, be becoming a good designer, okay? Um, I hope that's, that, that uh, answers the question and um, I hope it clarifies, um, you know, what I think about the whole issue. Um, thank you very much, um, uh, George. And I think that is, uh, is elaborate, it's something that uh, some of us, uh, for the several years that we have been in the industry, we have faced uh, paralysis of analysis and um, being, you know, um, suffocating yourself with your creativity and forgetting uh, that you're running a business. Uh, the business itself has got bills to pay and uh, the business is supposed to earn you a living so that now you can live a comfortable life, uh, either yourself or your family and dependents. So, there is need for many of us to have that uh, mind shift so that we put on our business suits more often than the design suit or the creativity suit. Um, I think every time I think personally about my business or allow me to say my businesses, I derive more satisfaction when I know that the business successes I get every so often are out of my business suit, even more than my creativity suit. And it is especially so when um, sometimes you find that the ceiling or the line for creativity is much lower than we want to get it. You know, sometimes we are chasing, we want our creativity to fly at 10,000 feet, but you realize that for the business to, to thrive, you just need 3,000 feet, higher, height above sea level, if you know what I mean. Um, but I want us to, to take a few steps back and um, ask even the members who are uh, present. I think I can see the numbers have really grown. Uh, I can see, uh, can see many people, Daktari, Rosalind, Vera, Kamoiro, Julia, Silas, Silas Mugo. Uh, Malaki, thank you for making it. And uh, several others that are with us, Rosemary. Santeni uh, Sana, I think uh, we want to find out, you can share with us on the chat and uh, in a few minutes I'm going to be opening the floor for you to ask questions on video. Uh, what are some of the obvious, obvious challenges? Because um, I want to mention right now, uh, 11 years later, obvious challenges, please share them on the chat and I'll be opening up the floor so that we can have uh, more interaction. Unfortunately, we had apologies just to mention as we progress um, from our chair. Uh, Samson, who was supposed to moderate, he's dealing with a bereavement, and uh, I'm sure that is something all of us understand, especially in these um, difficult times. Uh, and we stand with him. Uh, also, our second panelist uh, uh, was not able to make it again because of a family emergency of medical nature. So, as we progress, please share your share your questions and experiences about some of the most difficult challenges that we have faced uh, as businesses, as creatives. And I want to share with you my own personal story, especially when it comes to business skills and finances. Um, 
as one of the challenges that I have personally had, um, scenes of which I'm still paying up to today, uh, we've got challenges to do with um, accounting, challenges to do with tax, challenges to do with the uh, business projections. You know, if somebody asks you, um, how much money are you making? How much money did you make last year? What are you planning to make now that Corona has stepped in? Can you drop numbers? Can you, can you be more strategic? And um, I have hung around many creatives to see one of the challenges of us creatives not being strategic in how we approach business. You know, I know I want to start a design business. Niliget computer, nikanunua computer mbili. Uh, opened a domain, created a website. You know, you do those obvious things and you start posting your artwork and your logos on social media and you're like, I'm now in business. Then two, three, four, six years down the line, you realize, by the way, what have I been doing? Uh, am I removing money from pocket A and putting it back in pocket B and all that? So I would want you guys to share and... Um, I know even uh, George, as a friend, we have had these discussions. You've told me about things like the web apps that help guys to do accounting and things like that. You know, business has to be structured. I don't think we can do things, Mother Godanio, and many of us fall in that space. And uh, what are your views about that? And uh, especially on things like bookkeeping and uh, uh, planning. I know we are told your business plan in three months, but then Mwalimu Alituambia class four, failing to plan is planning to fail. What do you think? Uh, thank you very much, Nderitu. Uh, um, of course, when you start thinking about business, there are very many things that you need to think about. Um, if you've had a chance to work in, a, in an organization, you realize that uh, you have the, um, the HR department, you have the accounting department, you have the operations department, you have the technical department, uh, all, those, all those departments. And, and as a creative, you need to realize that uh, it's not any different uh, running a creative business um, from running uh, the way big, big, big organizations operate. So you find that, you know, you'll find yourself hiring people at some point. So that's an HR function. You find that you have operational issues, you know, uh, you need to do deliveries, you need to collect payments, all those things. So as a creative, it's upon you. Um, I'm a strong believer that um, even if you can hire the best people, you need to know a little bit about what everybody does. Because at the end of the day, you are the CEO of your business. So you have, yeah, you have the responsibility of understanding um, what, does, what, what are the challenges that your rider goes through? What are the challenges of collections? What are the challenges of creating a quotations and, and so on and so on. So as, as, as a creative, as a designer, you need to equip yourself with knowledge about all the other functions, um, but also not in a way that now you forget about your, um, uh, your, the, the thing that you want to do. Um, so somebody once told me, Adulu, you have to decide whether you're going to be the head or the hand, okay? In terms of if you are the head, then you are the thinker in the business, okay? And if you are the hand, then you are the technical. So you need to have the confidence and the, and, and the ability to trust that other people will also do a good job. And therefore, learn to focus on what you're good at. So if you, if, 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 um, if you want to focus on business development uh, in terms of looking for customers and so on and so on, just realize that you, know, you need to allow somebody else to help you um, to run, for example, if it's deliveries, um, all the other technical things. Uh, you may not be able to be the thinker, the person who looks for business or uh, the person who manages relationships in your business and still be the person um, who does the design work because uh, then you're going to be, find yourself uh, not being very productive because special, this specialization is very important. Okay? So you have to decide what are you going to do in your business and what help do you, do you look for in your business. The, the other way of getting around that is that um, sometimes as creatives and as designers, we want to operate as uh, sole, propri sole proprietors, which means it's my business and my business and my business. The challenge is that is that um, sometimes you find that growth will be very limited for you because as, a one, as, as an individual, there's only so much you can do. 
So, uh, it, you know, you have to evaluate and look at the possibilities of coming together and uh, partnering with other people. You know, you could team up two, three people with very diverse skills. Uh, you know, fellow creatives, maybe you are, you, you are a designer, somebody else, um, maybe one is a graphic designer, somebody else is a user experience designer, somebody else is uh, maybe another kind of designer. Um, or somebody else um, does something totally different but complements your business. So if you come together as a team, then you have a chance to put together um, an outfit that can now offer um, broad business solutions, you know, as opposed to you sticking to uh, an individual, being an individual, and therefore being limited to what you can do. So, so we need to explore the possibility of working with other people um, and then also uh, being being able to trust other that there are people who are better than you out there so that you can actually hire people to come and help you run the business you don't have to kill yourself trying to be everything in your business it, it doesn't work very well asante sana for for that insight um one of the things about um um business and creatives is that uh, we have friends who are creative like us and they are in the space and we want to work with them. And uh, talking about the hand and the head, I think uh, I found myself in that situation uh, last time. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if, um, All those who are joining us are Santeni Sana. I can see Sarem. Thank you for joining us. Um, and the other people who have joined us recently, Karibuni Sana. One of the challenges that I have seen is a partnership. And in the process of looking for the head and the hand, uh, I know in around uh, 2000, 2009, 2010, when we were starting business, uh, I don't think she attended today, but she was in the last uh, session we did. That was Sagina. We got together and uh, started the, the design business. In fact, we met when I was still working in my last job at Desta University. She's a, Sagina is a designer, is a graphic designer. She was one year, ahead, one year behind me at ADD and we started the business together. But eventually one of the challenges I found, and I want to address this because I have seen some of the questions that have been raised about partnership. And I feel I want to give my short example as a lesson. Uh, I think business partnership should actually be more of a marriage and still borrowing from the analogy that George gave that you have to choose whether you're the head or the hand there is a thought and then there is a working of the hands and the technical uh, execution bit and the challenge we had was that we were both doing the same thing and uh, eventually I got to have first-hand experience that uh, in business um, in business they have um, we have to be complementary it's like a marriage you have to be complementary if you get into a partnership where both of you do the same thing have the same skill then you're not adding value you're just setting up yourself for competition and uh, i'm saying that with all the respect with sagina who's not here and she's my friend and we still uh, work together on a lot of things uh, at a very at a very deep level of friendship um, and we realized that it wasn't working that way and we had to part ways uh, part ways in a friendly manner and respectable manner because she was a graphic designer and i was a graphic designer and i think uh, the thing i would want to say now is that uh, as creatives we must forge uh, partnerships that are complementary you look for what you're missing in your business setup and get somebody who's gonna add it uh, and more often you'll find that maybe that person is not a, a designer or maybe it's a designer of a different kind, with a different skill, with a different personality, uh, perhaps with different connections than the ones you have, because uh, I don't want to ignore the fact that here in Kenya, even maybe many places, business is about uh, connections. So I think I want to jump to um, Chetty. I think uh, there's a question that has been raised. Um, um, how do you define a problem to our potential clients correctly so that we can be relevant to the problems they are trying to solve how do we address the problems of our clients um, correctly so that they can solve uh, we the, the the solutions we offer can be solving 
uh, the solutions correctly. Uh, Charles, are you there? Mm, maybe Chesubire, you need to unmute his, uh, Charles. Okay. Is chatting the system. Mm. Okay. I don't think he's, uh, he's there. I think uh, I, he's there. Yes. He's there, but he's not. Uh, he's not talking. Uh, Maybe you need to unmute. You need to unmute him. I have already done that. Chetty. Chetty, we are waiting. Okay, we'll come back. Maybe I can jump to Wamboi uh, with a question uh, where the one that uh, Keith asked that uh, when you're young designers and people want to underestimate your age because most likely they are matching your age to your skill level. Uh, Wamboi, are you there? Yes, yes I am. Okay, please address uh, the question by uh, Keith who, uh, Nechesa who asked that uh, you know, I'm sure you know that story from the book of Timothy, for those who read the Bible, do not let people underestimate you because you're young. I have replaced the original word with underestimates. Uh, please give us your views and the advice on uh, that question. Okay, I want to share from uh, my experience. Okay, uh, first and foremost, hi everybody. My name is Wamboy, I'm an interior designer. Um, so trying my hand in entrepreneurship now, after working for a couple of years at planning interiors, which gave me very good um, exposure and grounding. Um, I, I'll give an example uh, from uh, when I was working um, under Eugene, who, was, uh, who is the CEO of planning. And our organization then was made up of both expatriates and, and um, uh, people who would study, uh, who'd studied and only worked locally. So that was the blend in planning. And Eugene noticed there was kind of the feeling that if, if somebody had studied abroad, then they had, of course, bigger exposure. And there was a feeling that if you studied locally, then you weren't as good, you know, quote unquote. And there was a feeling of maybe you're not very confident and you would want the work to be done by the expatriates as opposed to you actually doing the work. And he encouraged us to close our gaps. If you have a gap, if you realize you have a gap, maybe you're not very good in drawing, close that gap. If you're not, say, quote unquote, exposed to something like, uh, maybe you don't know how to, to select furniture, you don't know how to do select artwork, visit galleries, close your gap. And he said earlier on in his life, he got an opportunity to start closing his gaps when he realized, okay, I don't have exposure, what do I do? Let me travel. And he had a very good boss, then at planning systems. And to me, I picked that, that as a sentiment with a lot of weight and I want to encourage the younger designers, the people who are just graduating um, and the students, close any gap you have. Right now, you, you can't even say that, I mean, they, there's no internet. You, I mean, you can, there are YouTube tutorials, there's everything. And now there's even social media presence. You don't even need to ask anybody for permission. You go somewhere, you visit somewhere, post it. You can blog about it. You can let, let your work precede you. You know, you can be a copywriter for yourself. You know, maybe you go out, you take a walk. You, I mean, if you're a young person, you could be already writing about COVID and maybe it's impact on your profession. So to me, I'd say once you close your gap, you start having content and that content um, precedes you. And, 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 and I will use Steve's example, he's, he's used the Bible, he says, um, if you see somebody diligent in his work, he will dine with kings. Meaning that if, you, if, you, if your work precedes you, if you, if you work your skill, if you, if you polish up yourself by exposure, by education, by whatever means, then you will dine with kings. But if you're always cowering away, you're not confident, you're always using age as a stumbling block, then I mean two, three, five, ten years will pass by you. So this is the time to learn all types of new skills. You need them. You need them for the future. And when I did travel for international uh, conferences, I, it amazed me what 20-year-olds were doing. Um, that time I was 
I was nearing 30s and those people were drinking in their first year. And for that already just, it shattered my mindset in that the world is my playground. I should not compare myself with my peers who we graduated with. I should actually compare myself and with the people who are designers internationally. And that in itself is going to, to make me push my boundaries. So I would want to encourage all young designers, close your gap, get exposure, know your competition is outside the borders of our country. Yeah, that, that's, those are my two cents on it. Asante sana, Asante sana, uh, Wamboy, uh, for those insights. Um, I think, I don't know if Chesubira is back, uh, seems the network, yeah, yeah. or you're here. Okay, please uh, add your contribution to what uh, Wamboy was sharing, and then John Gatundu, uh, you're coming in next. Uh, I Chesubira. think one of the things the young designers can do. I can do is find somebody to work with, right? The way you become a mentor, right? So if you realize, like one boy has said, there's a gap, or you realize you're not being taken seriously, how about finding somebody who's and learning from them, right? Go and say, I'm giving presentations. Go get critique from other people. Sit down with somebody like Steve and tell him this is what the feedback I'm getting. Do a presentation to him. He will be able to show you the gaps. Do that on someone like Chet. Find a, somebody a little bit ahead of you, somebody way ahead of you, and just seek mentorship. Then they, you will be able to identify your gaps. And then, like Wamboi said, kill yourself up in those places where you have gaps. I'm done. Okay. Asante sana. Uh, Asante sana. Uh, John Gatundu. Uh... I'm sure you have something you want to say about how to make business thrive, maybe even a little bit more skewed towards communication. Uh, your chance now. Thank you very much. Let me put my video on so that at least you know or you see who's making the contribution. We can already see you and you can introduce yourself. Thank you. My name is John Gatundu. And uh, my design is in the field of architecture. Just a little bit, yeah. Thanks. Design. Now, my contribution to today's discussion is that as designers, we need to remain as much as we can in designing. And that is why if I refer to the introduction earlier of uh, George, that he started off as a photographer and it got to a point and he realized he's not really able to make enough and he moved on to videography and the same thing happened what i want to say is that as designers we must build ourselves in design and so that when it comes to the business side of design then we should rely on those whose skills are in business so that uh, if we can our partnerships should be really with those who are in other fields that in relation are able to make our design grow so that i do not have to worry about the business side of things i can get that partner who's really skilled in the area of business. I think uh, the contributor before the one who was before me did mention about looking at some of the organizations. And it's true, an organization has all the different departments all chipping in to make their core business prosper. So I would urge us that we look into ways of growing ourselves in partnership with others who will make a good contribution in the area that our business is in need. And to close, I will do that with a famous African that says, 
if you want to walk fast, then you walk alone. But if you want to walk far, then you walk with others. So let's join hands with those who are able to help us grow our design. Thank you, everybody. Asante sana, John Gatundu. Um, I think that confirms uh, uh, sentiments that were shared on this meeting earlier in terms of uh, 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 partnerships. There is a question that has been put across regarding um, collaboration. And I believe, uh, George, George Adulu, you can, you can connect what John Gatundu has shared in terms of collaboration and um, when to collaborate and on what and for what purpose. And there is something that we have interacted with elsewhere called even uh, personal projects, which is not necessarily uh, business, but it's an investment in business. So George Adulu, tell us more about uh, collaborations and how relevant they are in our creative space, especially as designers. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Steve. Um, when, when it comes to collaborations, um, the starting point, and if you don't get it right, then um, every other collaboration that you try to do after that becomes um, not effective. The first and the most important thing that you need to do is that you need to understand why you are in the creative business or what is it that you really want to do, okay? So you must begin with your why. Because if you've not figured out your why, then any, any sort of partnership will be attractive to you, okay? Which means uh, any route, any, any path, any partnership will make sense to you. However, if it is clear to you why your design business exists, why uh, the change that you seek to make for, for businesses, um, if that why is very clear to you, then you will only, you'll be in a better position to pick strategic partnerships. For example, um, if um, you want to, for example, design, um, for example, just you know, as an example, if you want to design an aeroplane, for example, then you see, then it becomes clear to you that I need to look for, say, an, air, an aircraft engineer, uh, you know, maybe I need to talk to air hostesses to understand their needs, I need to talk to pilots, and so on and so on. So, the starting point, in my opinion, is to be very clear to yourself why you are in the business of design, what is the change that you want to make, how do you want your, uh, your, design, um, your design business or, 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 or you as a creative, um, what change, how do you want to impact businesses? Once that is done, then it's very easy for you to pick who will, uh, because now the choice of which partner to go for becomes a matter of which partner do I need to help me achieve this particular objective? Okay, so so that even when you start to do these collaborations, you are you are very strategic. Okay, now then now the next phase for you as a young designer is um, how do I put my my name out there? Personal projects come in. Okay, because you have already figured out your why and the direction that you want to take with your your design your design. Uh, um, the career or, or your design business, then even the, the, the personal projects that you engage in uh, become personal projects that help you, number one, to showcase your, your skills and abilities, and also to help you position your business um, to, to a specific audience, okay? Um, then the other thing that also, I, I think I, I need to add at this point is that most of the time, as creatives, we never sit down to, to think about our customers, okay? Uh, by this I mean is that you never, we never take time to understand what is it that the would-be our customers actually want or need. So that even as we go to position our businesses, we are positioning our business to talk to that specific customer. Um, in branding, there's something um, we call the customer avatar which is basically an ideal description of your customer, okay? So, so once, you do, once it's very clear to you, for example, uh, you know, maybe your ideal customer is a middle-aged uh, woman or man, 
with these particular character, character, characteristics. Um, but the most important thing is that when you're thinking about your ideal customer, you have to, number one, understand what are their fears, what are their concerns, and what are their aspirations. So that when you go to create your products, your personal projects, and your collaborations, they are going to assist you to address the concerns that your, your customers have, you, the fears that, your, that, that your, your customers have, and the aspirations of your, of your customers. Okay, so just to emphasize, always start with your why, because then your why will determine the choices that you make as far as personal projects are concerned, as far as uh, you know, the customers are concerned, and also the partnerships that you're going to seek. Yeah. Okay, um, Asante Sana, um, George. I would like to add uh, to that before we come to the next point. And I want to mention that we now have around uh, less than 40 minutes left. Uh, actually, less than 30, less than 30 minutes left. And the floor is open for those who would want to um, make their contributions, uh, uh, not through the chat, but uh, so that I give you a minute or two to speak on camera. The, one of the things uh, without today's attendees feeling too overwhelmed with too much photography, but uh, we, are your, we are cousins to design anyway. Uh, and the DNA is the same in terms of uh, creative thinking and the delivery, whether you're talking about fashion or illustration or photography. Um, and I want to give an example that I have seen work uh, on collaborations briefly that sometimes you can use your own personal project which you have worked with other designers to throw you into the limelight and to draw attention to your skill and to your competencies uh, and to your products. Uh, we have one photographer called uh, Osborne Masharia which I believe in this country right now perhaps other than the award-winning Boniface Mwangi he is uh, and a good greatest of all time uh, in this generation, uh, Osborne Masharia jumped into the limelight as a photographer because of his personal projects, not because of his client work. What am I saying? But as designers, we are in an opportunity where we can create, um, where we can create uh, projects and ensure that the way they have been done and executed, um, the 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 give attention to our potential clients. The good thing about collaborative personal projects is that you get to give people and their skills the moments of glory. So if we are three of us and uh, I did assignment A and our task A and someone did task B and someone did task C, but um, I will be in the limelight as a person who did um, as a person who did task A, and then somebody else will be in the limelight. George, George Adul will be in the limelight because he's the one on this project who did task B. And then uh, Chesubire can be on the limelight on that same project because she is the one who did task C perfectly, and all of us together did this project. And I'll just, uh, for those of you who don't know much about Osborne, just go and check out. Um, he works with stylists, he works with lighting assistants, creative directors, and his work is to click the camera and to come up with the concepts, but he cannot execute those concepts uh, without the team. So I think we have not, as designers, executed, um, we have not exploited collaborations uh, fully as, uh, as they should be. So um, I would want to, I don't know if there's anybody who had made a request uh, to come in, but I want to jump into the, that question, Julia. Julia, are you there? I want to, uh, how does one cultivate thought leadership as a designer so that you gain both from the core and in the periphery? How do we become, how do we cultivate thought leadership uh, as a designer? I don't know if Julia Kamuru is there. Julia, can you hear me? Okay, Daktari, Dr. Osa. You're there. How do we? Julia is on mute now. 
Hello. That's oh Julia, you're you're there? I'm here. Yes, I'm okay. here. So we've uh, uh, one of the attendees has sent a question. Uh, how do we cultivate thought leadership as a designer uh, so that you can uh, benefit from that uh, in terms of the business and what comes with being a thought leader, perhaps in your area of specialization? And maybe you can give us your understanding of who is a thought leader and what do thought leaders do? So the question one last time, how do we cultivate thought leadership as designers so that we can benefit from them in our businesses? Okay, um, I'll start. The answer with just what I had said. In you please, cannot start, please start, Julia, please start again. Uh, we lost you in the first five seconds. Start again. Thank you. Okay, uh, I begin the answer with where Chesubire and Wamboi had left off, where they said we either fill in gaps, but also Chesubire had a very good point of you get to have a mentor who you either work under so that you also perfect the skills that you have. And this is where the aspect of thought leadership will actually come or emerge from. Knowing that either you are working as, as an apprentice and an apprentice to master what you're doing so that you're able to become a successful leader in whatever branch of design that you may be venturing into. That is very important. We continue to learn every day, not just from extra reading or extra doing, but also from working with other people who may be very similar, who may be doing very similar things in line with what we do, but who also get to show you on stuff that you haven't been able to work on before. I hope that answers that question. Hello? Um, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Um, I think the issue of mentorship, um, the issue of mentorship- One who's ahead of you? Yeah. Yes, mentorship is key. Okay. Um, I think the issue of mentorship keeps keeps jumping up, and uh, I don't know how far I mentorship. I don't know how we can cultivate mentorship very carefully to ensure that um, the up and coming designers are uh, guided, um, and to ensure that they don't go through some of the difficult paths uh, that uh, some of us went went through. Um, so, um, I think Daktari, 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 Dr. Osanjo, are you there? Yeah, she's there. Okay. Um, I think there's a question about, uh, market, international markets and how do we as designers here in Kenya, uh, get into international markets as consultants, are there legal frameworks that we need to deal with? And uh, how, how does, how's the outlook like for us as designers and the, and, the, and the international market? And then we'll come to George Adulu to tell us about the balance between employment and freelancing, uh, how you can hack both or prepare for an exit or something like that. So Dr. Osanjo and international opportunities. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I think I'll be very brief uh, uh, right now. But um, in terms of international markets, I, I, you need to package yourself and to position yourself as a designer, which means you don't follow, you actually lead. And leading means taking certain risks and being very um, consistent in those risks. I look at the guy who does the glasses. Is he called Cyrus? He's called Cyrus, I think, the artist. And he's doing a good job and he's breaking into the international market. Why? Because he, he, he's got this product, he's consistent with it, and he's, people then see. It's very easy for people to pick you out. Designers say they are not seen, but that's because they don't want to be seen. They don't want to come out. They don't want to put their work out there. They don't want to, to scream. So designers need to be a little bit more entrepreneurial. They need to be risk takers. 
and they need to stick with a, a good idea. If you have a good idea, stick with it and talk about it and be passionate about it and you'll be seen. At least that's the path I've taken. I've, I've, I, I, I'm, I might not be very, very well known for any particular design, but I stick with it. So I think designers need to get rid of fear, be entrepreneurial, be proactive, and stick with it. Asante, Asante, Asante for that. Um, allow me to add a little bit about the opportunities, then we'll come to George so that uh, we can talk about uh, someone raised an issue, a question, and I continue to remind you that the floor is open for any contributions on this uh, today's forum. Uh, we still have got around 20 minutes uh, left or less. Um, so feel free to post a question. Feel free to alert me on the chat if you need a minute or two. Uh, Sour so JSRM, I'll give you uh, a moment in a moment. Um, so I know that uh, this we mentioned in the last forum that we have, uh, the future of work. The future of work designers uh, is here with us. COVID has catalyzed that timeline. Perhaps what could have happened in maybe three or four years is here now. E-meetings and virtual experiences, everything is now here. And trust me, it's here to stay because even what we know COVID is here to stay. So we've got, um, just to add to what Dr. Ari has said, we also got uh, opportunities for designers um, on online uh, job posting platforms uh, like Fiverr and the like. And I think the challenge uh, for all that is uh, for us as designers. Uh, please remember to mute your mics, people. Please mute your mics. I can hear people cracking jokes with their children. Uh, just mute your mics if you're not talking. It's safe that way. Um, so when it comes to those international assignments, I think the biggest challenge, just like local ones, is being ready for business you'll find that you're working with a stranger who doesn't know you. Yes, they can see you on your Google business listing or on your website, uh, but they need to see a portfolio. They need to see that you're ready for business. And uh, being ready for business actually entails a lot of things. But I hope that as I add to what Dr. has shared about uh, consistency and the discipline, uh, learn how to be ready for business. So before we come to... Um, JSRM, uh, Adulu, how, how you could balance co-employment, you want to a kakitu on the side, uh, freelancing, or even as a beginner, how is that a bridge like? Hello. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that question. Um, Hi, people. You, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, but let let George finish. Let George finish. Uh, okay. Yes, then let George finish. He was uh, he's the one on the floor. Then we'll you're you're up next. Thanks. Okay. Um, Thank you very much for that question. Um, it's a very difficult question to to draw the line or to create to create a balance between uh, being employed and freelancing. Um, if you're already employed, then the question is, um, why do you want to to freelance or why do you want to get to into business? Um, and I'll keep going back to having a very clear mind on, on why you want to be in the creative space, why you want to be a designer. Uh, because if you answer that question, then the path that you take becomes very clear. And, it, and the choices that you, you are faced with, with your, the choices that you are faced with become very easy to, to take. An example is that um, maybe for you as a designer, you've decided uh, that you just want to be employed and therefore, uh, it's 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 all good. You don't need to think about uh, the business. I mean, no, you don't need to think about being self-employed. But if you're already self-employed and you're thinking about uh, having your own design agency at some point, then um, you need to think about your transition. 
because um, getting started and being as they, as uh, Steve said, being ready for business takes a, takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. There are a lot of things that you need to put in place. Uh, for example, you know, while you're still employed, uh, you know, think about you know register your business, you know set up set up your website, you know start building your own portfolio, so that by the time you are saying uh, you are ready, you've even tested your tested your business uh, model. You've tested uh, your skills. You know, are there people who have paid uh, for your service on the side? Because if nobody has ever paid for your business or for your service, then it is not clear that there is market out there. You need to test it. Get even one customer to pay for you for 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 for, for what you're offering. If one person can pay, then it's possible there's a second, a third, or even ten, or even hundreds who can pay for for your service. So if you're in employment, think about your transition. Uh, what kind of design do you want uh, to, to be known for? Do you have enough skills? Do you need to upgrade? Do you need to learn new things um, as far as the direction that you want to take uh, is concerned? So that by the time you're saying you're ready to move into self-employment, uh, everything is set for you. You know, in terms of you've, you've tested a business model, people are paid on the side, and now you're you're getting into full time with even uh, potentially a, a small pool of uh, clientele. Yeah, so that's how I would, I would, I would, uh, that's what I would advise people who are in employment and are thinking about design. But if you're in business, uh, just starting out as a designer, uh, the most important thing is to to define who you are as a designer. You know, remember you can't be a designer for everything. Maybe you want to be known as you want to be a UX as, as you want to be a UX designer or a graphic designer or an interior designer. Pick one, and the choice, uh, the how you pick one, uh, start with what are you passionate about? What is it that you you know you do very well? You know what is it that excites you the most? Because you know, some people will be excited by you know interiors. Some people will be um, excited about fabric. Uh, some people get their kick from uh, maybe graphic design. So whatever it is, uh, pick, um, make a choice. Decide why, why the direction that you want to take. Then next is uh, start improving yourself. You know, you want to be the best possible. You know, uh, so that you have a chance to differentiate yourself from from everybody else. Okay, and then uh, also as you start, especially for the young designers who are just getting into business, remember at the end of the day, your design work is there to solve business problems. Okay, so, so whatever you do, put your customer ahead of, uh, ahead, you know, at the center of everything you do. Um, I like to say, let your customer be the hero in your design work. So everything you're doing, it's for the customer, okay? It's not about you, but for the customer. Because then uh, you're adding value to them, okay? Um, then of course, uh, I, I think I need to mention this just to help the people who are, who are starting out. Um, in psychology, this, um, the way it works is that people get attracted to things that confirm their beliefs, okay? Um, an example is that if you look at your friends, I'm 100% sure that they are a reflection of who you are, okay? So as you position your business, remember the businesses that believe in the things that you stand for are going to find you, okay? So, so don't go chasing everybody. Just position yourself, and the right and the right businesses will find you. Okay, because you have to stand for something. If you want to be known for quality, brands that care about quality will come for you, and the issue of price will not be uh, will not be an issue. If you want to be known as the person who can design uh, in the next ten minutes, businesses that uh, care that that really are based on. Uh, <laughs> Quick turnaround, those guys who call you now and they're telling you they want a, a sample drafts in the next 10 minutes, they will find you. <laughs> so don't worry so much about chasing customers. Mm -hmm. Worry more about 
how have you positioned yourself? What do you want to be known for? If you want to be known for UX, please just talk about UX, show your work, and businesses that care about UX will find you. Okay. Yeah, so that, that, that's, that's my contribution on that. Asante sana, Asante sana. Uh, I will remember that statement because uh, as a graphic designer, uh, who does most of his printing downtown? I meet those designers, wale wanafanyanga logo, za letterhead, za kufanya tender in 10 minutes. And some of those guys go home with 5Gs a day, you know, by the way. I, I don't know. Uh, don't ask me any other questions. JCRM, the floor is yours. And thing before comes on. Can I say something? Yes, yes, yes. Doctor, Dr. okay. JSRM, you will talk. Please unmute your mic. We are coming to you. Uh -huh. Dr. I think, I think the, the biggest, one of the biggest uh, threats to designers doing business or is when they behave like typical artists. They love themselves, they love their work, and nobody cares. Maybe a few people are clapping for you from the road, but nobody's asking you how much. Take the example of fashion designers, and you love this skirt, and you put it in, so you can make 50 of it, and you put it up on the show. Nobody cares. People will clap, but nobody will ask you how much it is. You must separate yourself and your emotional attachments to your work from the business. Business is business. Somebody must be prepared to pay for your passion. Otherwise, skip it. Paint when you have time like myself. Hey, that one, that one has come like a knife. You may throw my daddy like in your quillim to hire. Saran, unmute your mic. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. So I think I'll contribute to the thought leadership um, question. And I, uh, I understand why. Let me interrupt mentorship. you. Maybe you, maybe you can introduce yourself briefly. Do I go to ah, sorry. There. So my name is Jacinta Serem. I'm an interior designer. Um, about the thought mentorship, um, my contribution would be um, the, 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 the fact that mentorship keeps coming up is, is it just shows how important that is and I think most of us experienced it especially when we were just leaving leaving school and getting into the market so it could be a bit difficult to sort of get individual mentorship going it's possible but uh, not as easy as what I'm suggesting which would be to use the online platforms like what we have right now uh, to sort of have a continuous discussion and continuous uh, conversations and invite um, the younger designers who have questions. It's easier to just sort of do it in a group setting. And since we have uh, social media on our side and so much uh, um, time with, with the COVID uh, situation at the moment, just to have regular sessions where we answer questions and sort of just engage them eventually form relationships that lead now to sort of one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Okay. Okay. I think... Uh, Thank you. Asante, 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 uh, Jacinta. Uh, Chesubire and the rest, the rest of the leadership, I think we have a challenge there in terms of action uh, and we will definitely... I don't want to say we will do something about it. I think I should say we will do we will do I don't, uh, saying we will do something it can also mean archiving like government reports and okay. let them gather dust is there somebody who wants to come on board uh am i leaving out somebody because we have four minutes and i think we just want to wrap up is there somebody who wants to add any comments uh this is the last call uh including yourself uh george rosemary uh, orina has her hand up and okay also yeah, my computer is lined up, so I don't see the hands, but Rosemary, this is your time. You have uh, two minutes. Uh, please go ahead. And then who? Emmanuel. And Emmanuel, eh? Okay. Yeah. So let's go with Rosemary, then we'll jump to Emmanuel. 
Unmute yourself, Rosemary. I'm Rosemary, and uh, I'm a fashion and textile designer, uh, owner of Roma Designs. Uh, mine is just to talk about collaboration. Recently, I tried to bring in young men in uh, web design and marketing, and I thought we would work together. But again, I think there was so, I don't know what to call it, but I have a very big space. So I thought, let me cut some space. The boys can work in one area as the production floor is in one area and uh, the display area. So these boys, they just decided to do things on their own. They started putting uh, signage, even at, at the door, they pulled out my, my name from the other door because I have two entrance. And I'm really feeling like this collaboration partnership, uh, I don't know how it works because I've tried it also in other area whereby somebody does different things as you do other things, but then you kind of work together and you complement one another. So uh, I'm really finding it a challenge. I think it just work initially and then you go separate ways as you grow. So these boys, what I did to them, I just decided to block them out and I told them to have their name because they had put their name also at the door. And you know now there are two names at the door. So I just told the management to give them that space because I'm, uh, as an old lady, I thought also I should also help them. But again, I'm very careful now about collaboration and partnership. Thank you. I think, uh, you know, I can see George Adulu laughing here. <laughs> um, in fact, just before we started this webinar, we were talking. And allow me guys to even share quickly uh, this collaboration. Uh, we have worked under the same roof uh, with George, and uh, I think we want to thank our parents because, uh, you know, now we are the ones who are parents and we have a big task. Um, there are those things that our parents taught us, and when you grow up, you don't need anybody to remind you, you know. Um, you know, because I'm looking at the challenges that Rosemary has highlighted, and uh, of course, we're in a generation where we are losing our humanness, that you appreciate somebody has given you space, or you're working with somebody and somehow there is a little bit of greed that wants to grab uh, what, is a, what is at stake. And umepewa tu meza, lakini wataka chukua hemayote, you know. Um, and I think people forget that you build each other, then you'll build a bigger house than if you try to build your house on that side and I build on this side. And, uh, and that is what collaboration is supposed to be, you know. And I think Katundu told us about, uh, I mean, the old proverb that has been mentioned over and over. If you want to go far, go with others. And I think your, your mentees or the guys you're assisting, Rosemary, could not appreciate that. Uh, quickly, uh, Emmanuel, 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 unmute your mic and the floor is yours. Emmanuel, akohapa, ama meenda kuchukua chai. Emmanuel? Emmanuel. Okay, if he comes back before we wrap up, uh, it's exactly 3.30, so um, maybe I want to, before I do just, I just want to do a quick summary bullet point, uh, then hand over to Chesubire to wrap up in case there are any announcements or uh, comments. Uh, so I think one of the key things definitely that have come up today are Santeni Sana, uh, uh, by the way, George, I don't know if I have, I'll give you one last chance, George, to add anything before we go to Chesubire. Um, we have, I think for me, the biggest takeout is what uh, Dr. Dr. Laila Kosanjo has said. Um, designers, we want to, we want to enjoy our highs, but we need to realize that uh, business is more for us. Um, We've been told about collaborations and looking for complementary relationships. Uh, I think uh, Wamboy mentioned something about young people and uh, having to look for confidence and setting themselves up. Uh, even if you're young, you shouldn't be afraid uh, of what is um, 
you know, intimidation from older clients and things like that. We have been told to be risk takers, stick to one path and um, to be proactive and be disciplined. Um, we have also been told about preparations and knowing who is your client, defining your client. Um, there is also the issue about thinking about an entrepreneur, even if you're in employment, you could be in employment, but you're running your businesses on the side, then you have to think like an entrepreneur, not like an employee. And then, um, so a lot of points have been raised and I'm sure in the follow-up, uh, like we did in the last time, there was an email that followed up and just summarized uh, what was discussed. I don't know if George, you had uh, something that you wanted to say or uh, you can just take a minute. And then uh, Chesubire, uh, back to you once uh, George has his closing remarks. Uh, thank you very much, Steve. Um, I think for me, the closing remarks would be um, it's, it's, it's only the strongest brands that are going to survive, um, you know, during this time and even post-COVID. So in whatever you do, you have to focus on building your brand. Okay. And to build a strong brand, you need to start with your why. You need to have a very clear understanding of why you are in the business of design. And uh, number two, you need to make your customers the hero of your design work. You know, as Dr. Ari said, nobody cares about you. The customer only cares about solving their business problems. So if you're not solving uh, the business problems of your customer uh, with your design work, then before, you, before, before long, you'll be closing shop. So also number three, understand that building a brand is, is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, so you have to be very strategic. You have to be very deliberate in everything that you do so that um, your brand has a, has, a, has a very good chance of surviving in the long run, yeah? Um, so just think about your why and think about your customer every day. That, that's my closing remark.